Uh, today, uh, Mingwei and I are going to share our journey on tamping the incoherent cache issues in confidential VMs. Uh, so this, this talk will be organized in two parts. First, I will give some background on the problem we are trying to solve and uh, explain why we have the incoherent cache lines in the first place and how a patch fix introduced the performance degradation. And the second part, Mingwei will, uh, share, Mingwei will show how we use the MMU notifier to solve the problem as well as uh, mitigate the performance impact. So uh, let's, get the, let's get the ball rolling. Uh, the, whole story, the whole story starts with the design of the CBIT uh, in SME, which is Secure Memory Encryption by AMD. So CBIT is a bit in the physical edges to mark whether a memory page is encrypted or not. So when enabled, this uh, when CBIT is enabled, uh, then all the memory access uh, will be automatically decrypted and encrypted by the hardware. And uh, assuming we have two, uh, assuming we have two edges here, and the only difference is the CBIT. So the memory management component in the kernel actually recognizes the CBIT. So it knows that these two addresses are pointing to the same physical location. However, uh, the uh, the cache, the CPU cache uh, in the hardware doesn't recognize the CBIT. So from the CPU cache perspective, the CBIT is just part of the uh, physical address and also part of the cache tag. So you can, you can imagine that there will be cases where uh, these two lines, these two cache lines can physically lie in the same piece of hardware at the same time and pointing to the same direct, uh, pointing to the same physical location. So depending on, you know, two different, uh, Cache, dirty cache lines might re, uh, will eventually result in uh, independent uh, write-back operations. And depending on the timing of the write-back operations, you might get into some trouble. So uh, that's, the, that's the case study to see why that is a trouble. So uh, let's assume that uh, those addresses are page addresses. So at time T0, uh, we have the confidential VN or the set VN owns this uh, page and writes some data into the page. So uh, at T0, uh, the, the first cache line with the CB equals to one would actually show up in the hardware with some dirty uh, data cache. And then this uh, page might be uh, released by this SevVM and then uh, to the host and the host might reallocate this page to another non-confidential VM. So when the non-confidential VM writes the uh, data into the page, uh, at a T0, you will see the second cache line with the CB equals to one also show up in this piece of hardware in, in the cache with some dirty data, right? So uh, you can see that at this moment at T1, there are two different uh, cache lines with different dirty data lying in the same piece of hardware. And later when the first cache line, uh, the write back operation was triggered first for the first cache line, this uh, dirty data from the previous confidential VN will be writing to the memory of the non-confidential VN that owns the page right now. And you got data corruption, right? So uh, the solution, uh, this is the basic form of the uh, cache incoherent issues that we will be discussing today. And the solution back in 2017 was pretty simple. We just do the cache flash whenever the, uh, the, the set VN gets the page or get destroyed. <laughs> yeah, until we fix the hardware, yeah. The, 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 exactly. Uh, uh, so, do you want to ask questions or? I mean, they, AMD is fixing hardware. They have partially fixed hardware on <laughs> Milan. So the original issue was you weren't even cache coherent within the same CPU. They got that resolved. They forgot about DMA. So that's the next level of thing. Um, <coughs> Allegedly, I think there's going to be a full featured fix, but so it's yeah, the, yes, we've got them to consider. I, yeah, I will cover this part <laughs> very shortly. So in 2020, uh, as Sean mentioned, like AMD actually uh, uh, rolled out a, a CPU feature called SME coherent, and this actually recognizes the CPU cache to recognize uh, <clears throat> enable the CPU cache to recognize the CBIT, so enforce so they, they can enforce the cache coherency in the hardware level. And uh, later in a patch, we just uh, skip all the cache flashes whenever the CPU has this uh, new feature. And in 2022, 
uh, we actually report a vulnerability and managed to crash the host from the user space by triggering the same uh, cache, uh, flat, uh, cache concurrent issues. And it turns out that, as Sean mentioned, like uh, the, this SME coherent can only enforce the cache coherency between the CPU processes, but not when the DMA devices touch the page. So uh, this is actually a day zero issue since Ceph was introduced. And uh, re we also figured that restoring the uh, cache flash that we mentioned in 2017 would not work because the previous uh, a, a VMM can actually bypass those cache flashes uh, either maliciously or accidentally. So our solution is to do the cache flash using the MMU notifier when the page leaves the, the leaves this, uh, confidential VM. And uh, when we post this patch to the upstream, we actually receive some reports on the performance degradation because we add some cache, additional cache flashes to the system. And uh, uh, we also realized that uh, some specially designed workload can also trigger those unnecessary cache flashes so next, Mingwei will share, will talk about how we still feel that MMU notifier is the best place to do the cache flashes and how we can use some information inside the MMU notifier to actually limit the performance degradation. Okay, Mingwei. Thanks, thanks, Jackie. So yeah, uh, let's get to the second part, but before we get into details, how, how can I flip? Yeah. Arrow key? Okay. Yeah, before we get into the detail, I'd like to spend one or two minutes, maybe recap a little bit. So make sure we understand the problem. So it's cache incoherence, right? And the solution is simple. We flush. What's the problem, right? You know, we start the VM, we allocate the data, we allocate the memory, we flush cache. When the VM dies, we flush the cache, right? The problem should be solved. Unfortunately, well, if we think so, yeah, there's no problem, seems to be, right? That's exactly follows the lifetime of VMs. But further investigation, we shows that actually our VMM is able to control the cache, the uh, memory allocation and deallocations. Therefore, it is able to basically unping the memory and trying to do something funky, right? In this case, situation may goes off the track. And then, and then we, you know, we see that, oh, SME coherency is actually not in, in, you know, effective. Those kind of worm cans are opened. So this is well exactly the situation is, right? So because of the VMN, right, a non root VMN is able to manipulate uh, the state of confidential VM. So you can deallocate memories. We, this will lead us into the very awkward situations. That's why we goes into this little bit brittle, but still the most effective, you know, the most, you know, working with minimum changes solutions. That's why before we get into details, I'd like to clarify a little bit. So in order to solve this cash flush problem, so what's the big deal, right? The first thing we want to improve is like, hey, can you flush the cash just for that VM? Is that possible, right? Isn't it idea? Isn't it supposed to, supposed to believe what we should do? Right, unfortunately, because of the existing MMU notify an uh, MMU x86 implementation, this is non-trivial, right? And that is why it is not covered in this, in this presentation. We we would spend majority of the time doing for the first, you know, uh, uh, actually the first uh, case. Well, we only flush cache in under circumstances well, the KVM understand that is deallocating the gas memory to the host because that is the only case where things will go wrong, right? So in order to do that, right, we, oh, go to the second page. Yes, we have to talk about the MMU notifiers. Why do we talk about this details? It's because this is the only interface where KVM is hooking into the memory management systems. So KVM is a secondary memory like IOMMU, right? Basically, hey, basically it says, I don't care about physical memory. Right? I don't directly manage that. Whether the physical memory is located, talking to the host MM systems. I only care about two things, mappings and TRBs, right? For mapping and TRBs, you know, we can do some optimization to do. This is where we're standing in between. You can see this line, MMU notifying validation range start. We're supposed to be walking the KVM host page table, but that's kind of non-trivial, as we already mentioned, right? We can also put in, go to the right hand side, but doing that, doing host page table walk at MMU notifier is also difficult. So because of that, we choose to say, hey, you know, we, as a simplified version, we can still say, hey, we flush the whole system cache, but we do it very carefully because there is a reason parameter inside MMU notifier 
event, basically coming from the host MM saying, hey, I want you to zap all of the memory pages, mappings, by the way. The, here's the reason. Oh, I am doing M on map. I am doing M on device. I am migrating your pages, right? For those reasons behind, there are actually eight of them, right? So we can select, okay, for these reasons, if you're really deallocating the gas memory, we flush the cache because that is the only choice we have, right? We want to do it simple. We want to make sure the security property is retained. For other cases such as, okay, I'm actually doing the M protect, right? You know, I'm changing the permission bit of those. Those are fine, you know, who cares? It doesn't matter. The guest memory still retains in the VM, right? It's, it's still in the VM process, right? For those reasons, we can give a kind of, you know, uh, clarifications and, and, and filtering out. And so that we can drastically reduce uh, the number of cache flashes to in, reduce the uh, you know performance regressions that we may generate to other VMs running the same host, and yeah, so that's the most effective approach. So that's what we can come to uh, conclusion. Yes. So I would like to leave the rest of the time for the questions, please, and any of them. Okay. So. Uh Trimming down the number of cache flushes in KVM seems like a no-brainer, especially if we don't have to make changes to core MM. It's like that's not controversial. Um, is there anything beyond that that we actually want to do or need to do? Like, are so, we actually trying to solve anything? Because if people are doing NUMA balancing with SEVVMs, can we just tell them don't do that on this current hardware because it's not going to work and turn that off and not try it? Because and like the unmapping thing, like you mentioned, the malicious user space. Like if you're unmapping on unmap. Then you have a different problem you need to rate limit your write back and validate so like what beyond the flush less with the existing mechanisms which is not controversial beyond that is there anything that you're proposing uh yes i think uh you know you're right you you raised a good point so there are several system level behaviors such as like mm trying to migrating pages and those kind of things are actually incompatible with this approach basically they're just shooting Right, you know, like, MMU notifier first, and then for oh, the page is pinged. Yeah, yeah but okay, like, I can't uh, do it. sorry, at a higher level, are we talking about we want to improve performance and um, fix known issues, or are we talking about theoretical things that because we are going to get hopefully hardware that doesn't have this problem, it's not a problem for SMP and TDX because we can just deny access to the pages. So it, it's a very specific set of VMs that are at this point becoming not legacy, but more esoteric than they were even when they launched on hardware that is going to be obsolete at some point is this a problem that needs to be solved beyond the obvious things or can we just say don't do that it's going to hurt yeah i, I think for for the question like this is like for sev and sev yes we have to do that right like we have to do something like this but for smp there might be a better but way to why, do so though? Like, what is the use case for having anything that's going to randomly migrate SEV pages? Right, other than attacks? But attacks, this does not prevent attacks. This does. This could prevent attacks. Because if, you, if, if your attack surface is, I can migrate pages to trigger write back and validate, you have to rate limit your write back and validates. Right, you're saying that we're you're you're saying that this is actually a performance attack attack. Is that what I'm you're asking about? what is the problem that we really want to solve? Because if the answer is oh it's this edge use case, then we just tell people don't do that edge use case because to solve this in the kernel is crazy complex, and you're going to have hardware you, that fixes the problem. You you can right like like VMM is not controlled by uh, by the you know by the kernel right. This VMM is actually on on in the threat model is untrusted. Right, so that's but, that's basically the things that's like what I'm asking, and but no, that's the fundamental because the VMM is able to do that at a runtime. Our confidential pages can be unpinned, uh, can be unpinned, can I be moved at any time during the lifetime of the VM. So that's why we, we have to do this on the on the uh, Amir notifiers. I know stuff. Ashish has a yeah. question, so maybe we'll get him and then we'll get to you, Dan. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to say that we did some profiling with the MMU invalidation notifiers and different reasons. And the clear was kind of the, the clear event which you talk about as filtering. Uh, we did uh, notice that it's used for multiple reasons, M advice, zapping, and all that. So do you think that is an event that you can filter out? Or it's, I, I was, when, when I did the profiling, I did notice that it's not an easy event to filter out because it's used for so many reasons and it's not just, uh, and, and, 
on top of it it's the main one of the main events which causes most of the performance issues uh, specific specifically yes, uh, load balancing and ks and uh, use cases yes thanks yeah th this this issue is well uh, acknowledged so basically the memory notifier reasons may be overloaded there might be several things have sharing the same reason but this should be fixable right like we if we change that adding new memory notifier reasons like clarifying different memory notifier inside the host mm we can solve that problem right you're saying that you post in the you do a little bit uh, you put the clear thing to be a little more a uh, post grain uh, uh, yes, kind of yeah. thing in a, <laughs> in a course in a course grain yeah, solution right. turn off those troublemaker stuff page migrations numa balancing don't move those pages make sure those pages don't move then your 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 yeah, system is safe you're, you're yeah. already a couple of minutes i've had thanks and the, the real question is should we just remove all of the legacy sv stuff that's that's actually the real question we should answer all right off we go Thank you.